Okay, so once again, my name is Rachel Wyszkowski. Thank you so much for being here this morning. Our goal for today's session is to share with you a little bit about what we know about students from a library perspective, but we also do want to hear from you. So we've designed um, the session to talk at you for a little bit, but then also um, have you do a few activities and share some of your thoughts with us. So hopefully this will be an engaging 35 minutes, I guess we have. Um, so to start off, I actually would like to zoom out and um, speak in terms of national trends and a little bit of national context about today's college students and their information literacy skills. So how they find, use, evaluate sources um, for their college level research. And there's um, an interesting project called Project Information Literacy that's an ongoing series of studies um, pulled from college campuses across the country, everything from you know, community colleges to colleges like USU, universities like USU, um, to private institutions. Um, and folks at Project Information Literacy are really interested in those questions of how college students today um, find and use information for their work. Um, and some of their major takeaways that I've listed here um, are, I guess the top one is students get really frustrated with the research process. Um, so students are saying that research is more and more difficult than ever before. Um, and that really um, has to do with how complex the information landscape has become. There's way more information out there in way more types of sources. And so students are asked to navigate a lot once they arrive on college campuses to do college level research. Um, project information literacy finds that students tend to use a pretty small compass to navigate that landscape. They go to kind of default, tried and true approaches that are mostly about efficiency and getting to information quickly and may not be the best source or the best way to, to do that um, process. So in addition to those frustrations, um, uh, kind of qualitative frustrations that project information literacy um, has captured. They've also done some survey research, um, and these are just a few stats that jumped out to us. So 84% of students are saying that the hardest part of research is getting started. How do I choose a topic? Where do I even begin? Um, and that 74% of freshmen struggle with some of the basics of formulating an effective search query and um, targeting their keywords and their searches um, to get relevant results rather than being overwhelmed by a sea of irrelevant information. A few more things from Project Information Literacy. I know there's a lot of text on this slide. Um, one of their most interesting studies, I think, um, was of college freshmen. And they surfaced five myths that freshmen have arriving on campus about the expectations of college level um, work. Number one is that college is about being independent, and so you shouldn't ask for help. Um, the second is that everything's online, so there's not really a need to go to a physical library or consult with a librarian for help um, in the process of research. Um, that librarians are really only there if you're stuck and can't be of help earlier in the process, maybe when you're getting started with the topic selection, or later in the process when it comes to synthesizing and writing. Um, Fourth, uh, that a scholarly database recommended by a librarian is the only source worth checking, and that there's kind of a problem or a difficulty with source evaluation in general. Either I should only look at what's been given to me by a librarian or by my instructor, or um, on the other end of the spectrum, you know, any information I find online, I can use without that evaluative component. And then the last myth here is that books um, are outdated, don't offer anything relevant about research. And that really surfaces a, a general misunderstanding about different source types and their different affordances and how different sources may or may not be appropriate for different use cases. And really, the challenge that students are, are coming to our campuses with is a fundamental misunderstanding of the process of research. Um, so research isn't something that you just check off as a single step, did my research, now I'm done, but rather it's a process of re-researching and it's a process that takes time. Um, but most folks are not asking for librarians help um, throughout that complicated process. So um, there are some gaps and some challenges here that have been identified nationally. Um, so now I'm going to hand it over to Casey to talk about how um, we've been working at USU to bridge some of these gaps. And I'll Okay, so Rachel talked about zooming out, and those studies are, um, they have the resources to do some pretty amazing studies. Um, but we, on a smaller scale, have um, 
tried to collect our own data. Um, and I heard Robert Wagner say yesterday, don't say data driven, say data um, informed. So we try to be data informed. <laughs> You're welcome, Robert. Um, uh, in, in an effort to make sure we're placing our, using our resources wisely, catching students on the things that they need the most. Um, and one of the things that Alex Sunt, our web services um, librarian, developed this, uh, in the recent year was um, developing USU library personas. So we have done a lot of usability, usability testing across um, different populations. And um, as you can imagine, we have um, Logan campus and regional students uh, with a variety of needs. We have undergraduate students. We have non-traditional students or graduate students who are full-time working and going to school in the evenings, obviously. Um, and just a real range uh, in terms of technical and research skills. So in any one class, any one of those populations, you can pretty much get a range of skills, right? And that, that seems to always be the case. Um, but these personas uh, have helped us sort of think about our users and you know, what would this user do in this situation? How might we use that to develop um, research help that is um, tailored and, and most effective? Um, so this is one way that we try to use data to help us understand our students and what we've learned. Um, we also just collect a lot. So uh, for those, many of you, I recognize and appreciate you being here. And um, a lot of that has to do with we may be a part of your class already. So uh, we do sometimes bring students into the library. We also have a new online librarian, Tegan, back there. Um, and she creates a lot of things that we have been implementing into courses. So we may not see the students, but we are putting our help sort of in, in places that work. So in the actual classroom, though, we reach about 10,000 students a year. And we have about 650 sessions a year with students. So that's a range of sometimes we do the database. Um, and, but we're trying to move towards, uh, more towards learning activities, like here's how you synthesize a research paper. Here's how um, we want you to build criteria for how you might evaluate something in your field, things like that. Uh, we also are at the desk. You still see us sometimes when you walk in the, in the library. Um, we have a lot, um, a lot of research questions, but also just a lot of other questions. So other can be anywhere. We do get like, where's the bathroom a lot? And we are proud to use our expertise <laughs> to answer that question. Um, but we also get a lot of research questions. And some of them are quite complex and um, follow up and consultations. So consultations can result as us giving out the subject librarian. So a lot of students don't realize there's a subject librarian in all their areas. Um, so when we get to a certain point at the desk, sometimes we'll say, here's your subject librarian. She can sit down with you for as long as it takes, and, and you can get more help. Um, and that's kind of where these have resulted. So yearly, that's about 250 hours of librarian on one-on-one -on -one contact with students, not to mention sort of the hands-on that they might get in a library session. So uh, trying to give them that really focused experience is always a goal for us. Are there any questions about any of that? OK. Um, so now we want to, um, we're going to really try not to talk to you. Really, the talking at is mostly done at this point, so congratulations. Um, and now we are going to, we want to, um, in terms of context, this is, we have a chat reference. Um, so one of the ways that um, you can come to the info desk, you can chat, you can email. Um, and we get quite a few students. Sometimes they're literally sitting at a computer about 10 feet away, and they'd rather just ask us a question anonymously. <laughs> and that's why we have that, right? If you don't want to be that, that student, that's fine. So these are. Um, chat transcripts that have come in um, in that context. And I'll hand it over to Pam Martin. So yeah, these are actual chats that came to our desk. We've kind of, uh, hopefully, are de-identifying so you can't recognize anyone. We've changed some of the stuff, but it's pretty true to um, any transactions that we might have. But these specifically came in through chat just because they're easier um, to uh, record for uh, posterity, if you will. So what we're going to do is I'm going to break you all into groups of three because I know how we love group work. Um, <laughs> and then um, you're going to say have one person responsible for each chat. Now, I'm giving you each a packet, and you'll have all three chats. Um, but if you can just split those up and decide which person is which, you only have to read um, one, be responsible for one for your group. So do you want to split yourselves into three, or should I do it? There's like three here. <laughs> well, I, we've looked at them quite extensively. We'd rather you talk to people who aren't librarians. Um, but yeah, she's behind you. I think she might need a partner. And if you don't have three, you can certainly do groups of two, groups of four if you need to. But yeah, if y'all want to be a group of two together, you're probably okay. So there are three, hey, how are you? Uh, there are three chats in here, but some of them are quite short. 
Hey, Stephen. They need another person. Stephen's coming. Don't worry. <laughs> so just make sure you have one person um, responsible for each chat. So you could do chat one, chat two, chat three, or something like that. Yeah, so you could do chat one, chat two, chat three. Does that make sense? You're each responsible for one chat? Okay. Questions? No, I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, just so you know, we also, at the end of the packet, we do have a little handout where you can take notes on the front. And on the back, we ask you for some input. We'll be taking these up. If you want to leave them here after, you certainly do not have to if you want to take it with you. But that's the last thing in your packet. OK, so, so we'll give you about five minutes to just read at first. So stop talking, Stephen. No. Okay, guys, if I can have your attention back to the front. Wow, y'all do that a lot faster than the freshmen I'm going to be seeing at Connections. That's great. Uh, okay, so what did you think? General thoughts in general about these chats? Yeah, Mary Ellen. <laughs> That's not the point, but thank you. <laughs> Uh -huh. But the specific resources, the questions, uh -huh. they keep asking so that you actually figure out, okay, what is it that they're assigning? I mean, you do mm -hmm. a lot of question asking, but you also point them to resources without doing the research for them. You know, question what is them. really hard to do in these chats, which I think is hard to display here, is to ask questions to you, because I'm not in your class, I don't know, without being accusatory, without being judgmental. It gets really hard, and especially on chats, because I can smile at you in person, I can read you in person. On chats, it can be even more difficult. It so it is, it is very much a back and forth, and uh, trying to listen, but then being like, is this really what you wanted, and that sort of thing. What else did you notice? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> we have had, not often, but sometimes students, not very often at all really, sometimes students were like, hey, I just wrote my paper, now I need some sources. So <laughs> we never like that, but I mean, it does happen. Last minute isn't unusual. So sometimes they are in a panic emotionally, so like you have to be aware of that. Like yeah, well, that's a, that's a lifetime compared to some of them, yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. Over satellite, and I've heard Susan Langer more than I know, but uh, Aaron <laughs> Davis has worked my class in course for a long time. Uh-huh. And we worked out, um, where I give the students extra credit points for setting up uh, a conference with her. Oh, great. But also, yeah. um, she, well, she has like five things that she wants them to do for her. Uh-huh. Yeah, and especially for students who are not on campus, who are at a regional campus or that are distance, we want to let them know um, all the resources they have. And partnering with an instructor is really a great opportunity for us. Well, but it's only the best students in the field. <laughs> yeah, it's true. We can't force them all. Uh, so what did y'all know about the students? And any thoughts on the students in these? Yeah, did you have? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. And then Tegan. Um, well, I feel like in the second one, the student was pretty well informed about exactly what to do. It was just very kind of obscure because we're doing the text in French. Uh-huh. Because you already didn't know how to search for it, even if you know the English. And the student in the third one, I mean, he's asking, my professor wants us to find one to two written sources and internet sources. I'm not exactly sure what that means. So it's like, you've got the whole section there. Yeah. What's isn't everything kind of a right. so not photographs yeah. so right. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. so I feel like in the third one the librarian's almost like okay let's clarify to each instructor yeah and a lot of times we do say go back to your instructor I don't grade you I'm not gonna right. interpret this for you because if, if I get it wrong and you get an F you know well, I mean, but I think that really shows what kind of day and age we're in students might not know what we're saying mm-hmm 
And everything's on the internet. Even scholarly sources, like the best peer-reviewed articles that you can get, oftentimes we buy them electronically. So are those internet sources or are those written <laughs> sources, which I still don't quite get what that was meaning. So. Yes, yeah. they're looking for the paper, they're looking exactly for the paper they want to write instead of for sources to inspire them to write something unique. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that's why you're searching. You're looking for little pieces that you'll put together this way. You won't find it perfectly put together already. <laughs> but it's, it's all about exploring and figuring these, these things out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're, so it, it might not look like that to you, but we try to choose um, chats that have some issues going on in them, including like our responses aren't necessarily perfect. Like we keep reading through and thinking, oh, we should have said that differently, <laughs> or things like this. Um, because, but no interaction is ever perfect, but it, it makes it hard for us sometimes when, because we don't have your assignment in front of us too. And a lot of times we haven't worked as closely as maybe you would work with Aaron or maybe I get the question and Aaron's not there, you know, so I just don't know. Um, a lot of times I end up asking students just like, do you have your assignment in your backpack with you or could you send me the syllabus? Because then we can look at it together and maybe they said written sources and actually it says like, a print source or, or has some other delineation in there that they're not telling me. So really you kind of have to keep digging down. Other thoughts though about the chats in general? Are specific things? Yeah, sometimes they take longer. Um, <laughs> Well, and, and sometimes they don't take that long. Sometimes they are very fast. I think it just uh, depends on what they're looking for. And we gave you some examples that some of them took longer. Some of them asked, well, one asked for help and was like, this is going to be super fast, knowing that they had to what, go to work. I think that was the case. Um, and then it was like, oh, I'm going to have to actually think about this, you know, and slow down. So I think sometimes students are surprised by how long it takes to. I do describe us sometimes as annoyingly helpful, like sometimes you have to be like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> So we only have about four minutes left, so um, I think a lot of the things that we kind of pulled out of the chats are the same exact ones that y'all did, so we don't necessarily uh, need to go uh, through all, all of this, though I would, again, emphasize maybe the emotional factors that come into play, and I think it is harder to see in um, the chats than anywhere, um, but a lot of times students are waiting to the last minute, and they are um, freaked out. Are, they're shocked that um, the evidence they're finding doesn't absolutely support their worldview. And that can be hard. Like, it's not an easy process. Like, learning is difficult sometimes. Um, so we need to be, we try to be really careful of that. Anything y'all wanted to add, though?
Uh huh. And then, and since there are enough controversial topics within our study, that I thought, is it worth like assigning one and not tell them to say, like, you gotta pick your pro, like, do research, like, help them like expand their knowledge base, like, what? Yeah, there are some interesting studies that out there about it, and um, you know, there's a lot of 2010 instructors, and in I think part of sometimes. Students love saying, go read about anything in the world. But there is some research out there that says you might help them select some sources. You might give them a framework for a, a really broad topic. Like I've seen people do it well with foods. Or even I feel like post-truth or fake news gives us a nice, that's a broad, I mean, that hits so many different disciplines in interesting ways. And we that, tie into the lecture that that series help, they're yeah. doing on facticity and The assumption that they know how to read and even select a topic small. could be, I think, kind of scaffolded much more than it is. I have seen an instructor do it on baseball, though, and it didn't work at all because some people were just turned off by the word baseball. Those people are un-American, but <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, but in 2010, I had my students in service in a community-based mm -hmm. with a nonprofit, and that their research was a thumbs up or bad mm -hmm. experience, but the problem was the regional thing. And that's probably really and helpful. Yeah. Something that means, yeah. So and we and we're seeing both done well. I've seen, I've seen choose any topic, and, and some students know to choose things they love, and it doesn't feel like slogging through research because they love it. But some students don't know how to do that. So I'm so sorry. We do just have like one minute left, and we have a question for you, and it is on the back of the handout, too. So even if you don't want to talk to us. But we'd really like to know, even from reading these chats, do you know things that we should be aware of when we're talking to students about your assignments, when we're trying to help fulfill their research needs? Or are there things that you as instructors think maybe we should be more aware of because we realize it's a two-way street. <laughs> so we'd like to know if you have any thoughts on your students, your assignments, anything like that. And feel free to just write them on there. You can leave them silently or you could talk in the last minute that we have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I find that one of their major stumbling blocks is they don't know what to do when a source isn't readily available. So mm -hmm. they want to hop on there and they find an article that they want and then it doesn't click yeah. and they just kind of stop. So <sighs> I, yeah. I mean, I always encourage them to go talk to the library and go do this, go try that. Um, but I think being aware that they don't necessarily have an idea that interlibrary exists or that if they're not just dead because we have faith that we have it, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Or just because we don't have it electronically doesn't mean it's not upstairs. It's not like upstairs somewhere. So, so that would be the main thing. Like okay. sometimes I think they know all about databases, but they don't know what to do when their article doesn't just magically pop up. Okay. That's good to hear. Any other thoughts? Yeah, we try to make it as easy as possible, but it's hard getting our different companies that we buy from for better deals to talk to each other sometimes. <laughs> I think they just feel really good. Tegan? <laughs> so I'm one of the librarians at South Bend and we teach next year. So we're trying to get this thing on a transfer for the open office where you just address the top issues. So we brought in a sutra and <laughs> show them that the library is kind of a friendly face. But I think the best way to get them to talk to your talk to the library is just to, to encourage it yourself. So like Bob said, like ask for credit or just kind of mm -hmm. even an additional saying like the library is friendly. Uh, yeah, raising awareness, I would say, is the number one thing. Also, Tegan and Aaron are great, but you can talk to any of us librarians and we'll hook you up. Um, they've been doing a lot of videos, that sort of stuff, um, like a lot of really cool animation now. <laughs> so, yeah. No, I just said, especially if you don't like extra credit or anything, but I have a checklist that they have to complete before they turn in their paper. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really helpful because they can just kind of check it off and they don't have to go back and Oh. And I love how broad that is, too, because unfortunately, if, if all courses said we require you to meet with a librarian, we'll get a lot of inauthentic questions, and we probably that's won't true. have to name it. So that's one thing to think about, but I like that that's many different ways of showing that you've interacted with the library. Yeah, it is unfortunate when students come and they're like, well, I have all my sources already, but I was told to meet with you, and I'm like... But I think the time is up. And <laughs>
Yes, yes it is. I was going to say, Sorry. it's so <laughs> fabulous that the discussion is continuing and maybe it can bleed off into lunch. I'll leave our manifesto slash conclusion on the, <laughs> on the slide here um, and just mention that we're really all about the students. We think that, um, you know, in spite of the challenges that students face, we believe every student can get there as long as they have ample practice and guidance, and that's what we're all about. So please um, reach out to us, come visit our booth, um, and thank you for coming today. Thank you, guys.